Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I want to continue with the study of the book of Galatians, a verse-by-verse commentary. Uh, today I'm going to begin with chapter 2, verse 1. In the KJV it says, Then, 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Um, yeah, there's the 14 years that I mentioned earlier in the last video. Uh, there was a 14-year period. Uh, I think when you add the three years that was mentioned earlier, too, there, there's a total of 17 years that uh, we don't really know what Paul was doing. But uh, uh, and then the next verse, And I went up to, up by revelation, communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Well, it, it seems, uh, I think there's an obvious question here that, uh, a lot of times people probably think of this, but maybe they don't want to even ask the question because it, you might be able, might be implying or inferring some kind of, uh, uh, that, that Paul had some kind of doubt about his message. He was, uh, went to Jerusalem to talk to James and Peter and John and the, 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 the Jews, Jerusalem church leaders. Uh, to get approval for his message, but did he really seek approval? Did he did he really need approval from them? Uh, I mean, after all, he didn't get his message from any man. It said in the last chapter that he got his message directly from Jesus Christ. So uh, obviously, if uh, if anybody's going to be right about the gospel, uh, it would be Paul because Jesus told him directly. Uh, so I, I don't think that Paul has any, any doubts about that. I think in, in a way he's using, uh, what is the word for it? Uh, he, he, he uses many times in this chapter, um, he kind of, I think almost mockingly um, mentions the the apostles are they're so um, let me see what's the word to them which were of reputation. I think there's going to be more statements like that coming up. But he's uh, these people have a great reputation. They are the apostles. They are the people that uh, uh, were with Jesus in his ministry. They were. There, uh, you know, saw him in the resurrection. Um, so they, of course, have the reputation of, um, if anybody knows, it should be those people who were with Jesus for three and a half years and uh, witnessed his bodily re resurrection. Um, so they have this reputation. They have this elevated st status and people respect them, and trust what they, they say. Uh, but I believe as we go along, we're going to see that Paul doesn't really respect the position. Let's, let me read these couple of verses all in the Amplified, see what phrases it though. Then after a period of 14 years, I again went up to Jerusalem, this time with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. I went up to Jerusalem because of a divine revelation, and I put before them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. But I did so in private before those of reputation, for fear that I might be running or had the course of my ministry in vain. Um, well, if, if there was a contradiction, and by the way, there were contradictions 
in the in, in the first uh, James decree, that was eleven years after Pentecost, right after Peter preached to uh, Cornelius and Gentiles are now being saved. Um, they were trying to impose upon the Gentiles all of Judaism, and they had this debate. And James came up with this compromise: well, as long as they don't fornicate and eat strangled uh, meat, or that what first of all, that's that's legalism, that that's imposing something else on them as a, an additional requirement. So that's faith plus don't fornicate and don't eat uh, strangled animals. Uh, so James could not resist uh, the, imposing some kind of legalism on, on them because the state of the church at, up to that point was Faith in Jesus and you follow Judaism completely. Oh, now Gentiles are coming in. Should we impose all Judaism on, on them? Well, well, we'll make a compromise. We won't make them follow Judaism uh, so strictly. But, um, of course, for years to come, for decades to come, uh, people were, uh, the, the, the uh, Judaizers were continuing to say, you got to be circumcised, you got to follow Judaism. So even though James had this decree that, well, as long as they don't fornicate and uh, eat strangled meat, then that's okay. But uh, that's not really the way it worked because all the people from Judea who were uh, following Paul around, being this thorn in the flesh of Paul and spoiling all of his work and all his churches, um, these Judaizers, uh, they were not saying, well, you got to just don't fornicate and don't, uh, don't eat strangled meat. No, they, they were imposing all of Judaism on the Gentiles. So this persisted. It was not settled right off the bat. And here's something that I mentioned this in the last video. Uh, but I think one of the reasons that people just don't get something so basic that the, the beginning of the church was different than it was, uh, uh, you know, after Acts. Uh, um, from Pentecost until the end of Acts, there was this transition. I've mentioned it before, but in the beginning, they believed that you had to believe in Jesus and you had to practice Judaism. Uh, and Gentiles are not allowed, only Jews. And then gradually it transitioned, so they were allowing Gentiles, but trying to impose Judaism on them. And then they watered down the Judaism a little bit uh, for the Gentiles. But all the Jewish believers had to continue practicing Judaism and believe in Jesus. And then the Judaizers were still going around to Paul's churches and telling them, no, you've got to be circumcised, you've got to follow the dietary laws, and you better go to the temple and do your animal sacrifices too. That's what the book of Hebrews is arguing against. So, um, the, the, the reason people don't really understand uh, how, how this, this transition period is because they don't understand the time frame of all these events. Now, I mentioned last time that, uh, let's say that the beginning of the church is Pentecost. Now, some people, a lot of people argue as to what exactly is the beginning of the church, but the, the first time you had any Spirit-filled, spirit-sealed believers uh, was at Pentecost. And before Pentecost, you had the, the apostles. Jesus breathed into them. He filled them with the Holy Spirit, empowered them to do some miracles. But the Spirit didn't dwell in them permanently. Uh, in the Old Testament, the prophets, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered to do miracles, but they were never sealed with the Holy Spirit. But once Pentecost came, now it's a, it's a brand new situation. The Holy Spirit of God lives in the believer permanently, sealed into the day of redemption. So uh, the, the Bible says that what is a Christian, the definition of a Christian is someone who has the Holy Spirit sealed into them. If you don't have the Holy Spirit sealed into you, you're not, not a Christian. Um, so I say that's where the, the church began at Pentecost. But from Pentecost, uh, it was a three and a half year period before Stephen was stoned. Uh, and then it, then it was from Pentecost, it was six and a half years before Paul was converted. It was um, a 10 year period before Peter was sent to preach to Cornelius and Gentiles 
began to get saved. Uh, it was 11 years after Pentecost where James made his first decree where Peter was criticized for going into the Gentiles' home. Don't you can't associate with Gentiles. And on top of it, you ate with them? That's forbidden. And you told them about Jesus? Ah, and Jesus, Peter said, and they got saved just like we did. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and uh, they're saved just like us. And they were... Uh, uh, they, uh, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. The first time we see the term believed on the Lord Jesus Christ is when Peter is giving his account to James and the Jerusalem church uh, about how uh, Cornelius and his family believed. He said they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's, that phrase is not coined by Paul in Acts 16.31. It's much earlier with Peter. Uh, but uh, this first uh, directive from James, the um, the decree that okay, uh, we'll we'll allow the Gentiles to be part of this, we'll accept that because P Peter's saying that God told him to do it. So Peter's not going to follow what men say. Peter's going to follow what God says. So they they allowed it, but I think they did it grudgingly, and I think when they uh, agreed for Paul, I think this is coming up in this chapter, but I, I, when they agreed for Paul to go off and be the apostles of the Gentiles, it wasn't some great honorarium, the title and, and, and uh, position that they were uh, honoring him with. They just wanted to get rid of him because they still did not accept Gentiles. They did still wanted to segregate. They still did not want to eat with them. And the proof is, when Peter uh, was eating with the Gentiles and then the men from James came, uh, he wouldn't eat with them. He ate with the, with the, the uh, Jewish believers and he ate kosher. And Paul was very upset about that hypocrisy. So even though James made this decree, I don't believe James and the, and the Jerusalem church really uh, wanted having anything to do with Gentiles. And they were happy to get rid of Paul. Paul, go on. You go to the whole world and talk to all the Gentiles. We'll have Peter and John and James. We'll deal with the, the, the Jewish believers. You can have all the Gentiles. But that was just like, good riddance, Paul. Get out of here. And uh, you go work on the G Gentiles because we don't really care about the Gentiles anyway. That's my opinion. I, I first heard that opinion from uh, um, Aaron Budgen. Uh, he's on my recommended uh, channels list. So go to his channel and watch his videos. Uh, he's, a, he's a Jewish believer that was uh, studying to be a rabbi, became a, a Christian, and he has some insights because of his uh, Judaism that uh, are very fascinating. Um, but let me see. Okay, let me get back to the, the verses. Uh, Let's go to verse 3. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. You see, they were compelling people to be circumcised. And so there's kind of a, a surprise here. I mean, they were expecting it. Are they going to want Titus to be circumcised? Because after all, the reason they came to Jerusalem was because in Acts chapter 15, the Judaizers were... Uh, telling um, people that, hey, you can't be saved unless you're circumcised. And Paul says, that's not true. And then they formed this, agreed to go to Jerusalem and, and talk about this and have a meeting, have this council at Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Uh, so it, it, it boils down to that's what the point of them coming there is to say, hey, the, they don't have to be circumcised. They don't have to do, practice Judaism at all, is what Paul is arguing. So they're expecting an argument from James and the Jerusalem church to that uh, hey, Titus, he, he needs to be circumcised. So I think there's a little surprise there. Um, and verse four, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Um, so Paul is, uh, is saying that he's, he 
he didn't tolerate it when they when the Judaizers came and trying to oppose Judaism on it. He's not going to accept it now uh, in Jerusalem from James or anybody else. And uh, he, let me read these verses in the Amplified, verse, starting with verse 3. But all went well. But all went well, for not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled, as some had anticipated, to be circumcised, despite the fact that he was a Greek. My concern was because of the false brothers, those people masquerading as Christians. See? So, see, Paul... What, what is he really saying there? He's saying that the Judaizers are masquerading as Christians. Uh, what is it, a Christian? A Christian is someone who relies on Christ completely. They have no faith in circumcision or dietary laws or animal sacrifices. Their faith is in, on Christ. They're relying on Christ completely. So he considers these people to be false Brethren, how is it phrased here? My concern was because of the false brothers, those people masquerading as Christians, who had been secretly smuggled into the community of believers. Okay? So these are the Judaizers that say, well, yeah, you, you can believe in Jesus, but you better practice Judaism too. Um, let me see, there's a couple of footnotes here I want to look at. Galatians 2.2, 2, 2. this group would have included the apostles Peter and John, as well as James, Jesus' half-brother, who was also the leader of the Jerusalem church. So uh, James, it's, it's well established that James was the leader of the Jerusalem church. Uh, and all the problems are coming out of Jerusalem and Judea. This, the Judaizers, uh, they're from Judea, and specifically from, uh, from uh, Jerusalem in James Church. Um, Galatians 2, 4 says, uh, the Judaizers, let me see, 2, 4. And that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, okay, so they, they, they agree that this, these false brethren are the Judaizers. They're false brethren. The Judaizers are not saved because they are not putting their faith entirely in Jesus. Um, now back to KJV. But of those, this verse 6, but of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. So who's Paul talking about? He's talking about James, Peter, John, all those leaders of the Jerusalem church that uh, he, he's saying, I, I don't care what they say. I got my message directly from, from Jesus. I don't care what their reputation is. So when he, he says, but of these who seem to be someone, uh, whatsoever they were, whatever they are, it maketh no matter to me. I don't give a damn about what you, what their claims are about they were with Jesus. Or, hey, I know the truth because Jesus told me the gospel directly. So um, he, 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 is, he is very disrespectful uh, what, what he's saying here about the leaders of the Jerusalem church. Let me read verse 6 in the Amplified. But from those who were of high reputation, whatever they were, in terms of individual importance, makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. He is not impressed with the positions that people hold, nor does he recognize distinctions such as fame or power. Well, those who were of reputation contributed nothing to me. That is, they had nothing to add to my gospel message, nor did they impose any new requirements on me. So, um, uh, they didn't impose anything else on uh, Paul. Paul stood up to them. Uh, and uh, But we find out later that Paul is, uh, after this council, uh, they're still out to murder Paul. These, these uh, Judaizers, they want to murder Paul because they believe that Paul is telling people, which he was, he's saying, you need to get rid of Judaism. 
you got to discard it. You can't have anything to do with Judaism anymore. You, know, you can't have no faith in Judaism. All has to so all be on Jesus. So uh, they sought to kill him. Matter of fact, they took an oath that they would not eat again until Paul was dead. Who were those people? Those were the Jewish believers. Um, but so Paul stood his ground, ground and they didn't dare try to impose uh, any Judaism on Paul. But I think they basically were humoring Paul to saying, okay, uh, that's fine, Paul. You're doing a great job with those Gentiles. Just keep on going off. Go off to these other countries and, and talk to all the Gentiles. And uh, we'll, we'll handle the, the Jewish believers here. Peter, John, James, we'll, we'll handle that. Uh, so I think they were very happy to send Paul off to the Gentiles uh, because I don't think that they had really accepted Gentiles even up to this point. Um, verse 8 in the KJV. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. <clears throat> now, so Peter has this apostleship to, uh, of the circumcision. So in other words, Peter is, is uh, primarily talking to the Jewish people. Paul, he's called the apostle of the Gentiles, but what did he do? Every town he entered, the first thing he did was go to the synagogue first. And he talked to the Jews. So Paul was talking to the, the Jews first. And then after he went to the synagogue, tried to convert the Jews, then he talked to all the Gentiles. Uh, Peter was the first one that God sent to preach to the Gentiles. And uh, the first Gentiles that got saved was because of Peter's message. It was Peter that stood up against James and the Jerusalem church saying that, God told me to do this. I don't care what man says. I'm going to obey God. He told me to go to their house and that the, the food, no, no food is unclean and that, uh, and that nothing's unclean. So the Gentiles are not unclean either. That uh, We can associate with Gentiles and they got equally saved as us. They had the sign of the, the speaking in tongues. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They believed on the Lord Jesus Christ just as we did. And so Peter did st stand up to James at that point. But I think that Peter had a hard time standing up to James in the Jerusalem church uh, throughout uh, the re remainder of his life, though. Uh, and that, I think, argument is going to be coming to a head here pretty soon, or, or I think we'll be discussing that. Um, well, let me read verse 8 in the Amplified. Um, just as Peter had been entrusted to proclaim the gospel to the circumcised Jews, for he who worked effectively for Peter empowered him in his ministry to the Jews, also worked effectively for me and empowered me in my ministry to the Gentiles. So verse 9 uh, in the KJV is, And when James, Cephas, that's Peter's Greek name, so when James, Peter, and John who seem to be pillars. Why is he saying seem to be pillars? Why doesn't he say, when James, Peter, and John, who are pillars of the church, who everybody admires, including me, but no, he phrases it, who seem to be pillars. Uh, he, he doesn't respect them because they, they are still, uh, unfortunately, holding on to Judaism and, and, and segregating themselves from the, Jew, the, the Gentiles, um, who seem to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. Yeah. Oh, good job, brother, brother Paul. Now you just keep on, keep on preaching to those Gentiles over there, way over there, far, far away. Go over there to all those Gentiles. Just, Leave uh, Israel and the uh, Jerusalem to us. Uh, that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Verse 10. Only they would that only they would that we should remember the poor. So 
So still, they just cannot resist trying to impose something on Paul. And, uh, but Paul takes it with, with good humor, even though he's not going to make this part of the gospel. He doesn't say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He died for your sins. He rose from the dead. Faith in him is all that's required, but you've got to also make sure you remember the poor or you're not going to be saved. Paul didn't add that to his message. He just said, okay, uh, only they would that we should remember the poor, uh, the same which I also was forward to do. So Paul was going to do that anyway, just because he, you know, he, um, as a Christian, as a, uh, as a spirit filled, uh, you know, uh, apostle, uh, he's going to, uh, uh, the promptings of the Holy Spirit uh, make him feel, hey, uh, I can't sit by and just let people be poor and not help them. So we need to care about the poor people. Um, but that has nothing to do with salvation. That just has to do with, you know, discipleship and your ministry and your your walk and, and service as a, as a Christian. So read I'll read 9 and 10 in the Amplified. And recognizing the grace that God has bestowed on me, James and Cephas, that is Peter and John, who were reputed to be pillars of the Jerusalem church, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship so that we could go to the Gentiles with their blessing. And yeah, with their blessing. Get, yeah, good riddance. Go, you go preach to those Gentiles. You stay away from the Jews. We don't want you telling them that they got to leave Judaism. Uh, so that we could go to the Gentiles with their blessing and they to the circumcised Jews. They asked only one thing that we would remember the poor, the very thing I was also eager to do. Um, all right. So, um, uh, what, what, one last, last time and then I'll, I'll finish here that this, this time frame of all these events, this is where people go wrong. The, you, you read the book of Acts, you, you, you think that these things are all happening in a, in a matter of days and weeks and months, but it's taking place over a 30-year period. Uh, so you got Pentecost, after three and a half years, Stephen gets stoned. Uh, from Pentecost, six and a half years, Paul on the road, is on the road to Damascus, he gets saved. And then after he gets saved, he waits about 17 years. Three years one place and then 14 years again. And uh, he basically is, is doing really nothing. And he, he starts after that, after this council in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, that's when he goes on his first, second, and third missionary journeys. Uh, so then you got after, uh, so you got six and a half years after Pentecost, Paul gets saved. And then 10 years after Pentecost, you've got Peter sent to Cornelius and Gentiles. So 10 years go by. Before it, there's any Gentiles. And 11 years afterwards, now they find out that Gentiles are being saved and James is confronting Peter over it. And what in the world are you doing? You can't associate with Gentiles. Uh, their, their society was segregated. Jews didn't have anything to do with Gentiles. And, uh, but Peter says, God told me to do it. So I'm going to listen to God. And they got saved just like us. And so, uh, uh, uh James, uh, in uh, the Jerusalem church, they make this decree. Okay. Um, all right. They can be, they can be, uh, Christians too, but they're, uh, um, they got to follow Judaism. Well, no, no. Well, okay. If they're ever going to follow Judaism completely, they, at least they got to not fornicate and they got to, uh, don't eat strangled meat. Uh, so they had to impose some kind of legalism on because they are legalists. And so that's the way they think. Um, so that's, that happened 11 years after Pentecost. And then from, from that first decree by James, it's nine more years, which is 20 years after Pentecost, you have this council at Jerusalem where the Judaizers are still following Paul's churches, you know, trying to ruin them with another gospel, faith plus Judaism and, uh, and, and they're saying Acts chapter 15, verse 1, you can't be saved unless you're circumcised. So Paul says, oh, we're going to Jerusalem to straighten this out. And they have this meeting. This is 20 years after Pentecost. So for 20 years, you can see 
there's still an issue with accepting the Gentiles and, and, and uh, uh, letting go of Judaism. Um, all right. Um, I'll pick up with uh, chapter 11. Um, uh, next time. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God. Not, cha not chapter 11, but uh, chapter 2, verse 11. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.